Is there some Kleenex back there? Anybody know? Get it. Xerox the solid development it fixes the drawing, right? That's right. Xerox ink will not smear with turbo. If you spray fix it, some colors will bleed radically. This one, Copenhagen blue, I don't think it does. Ultramarine blue, for instance, does. Some of the violets do. So, you know, either avoid it, therefore, or anticipate it and use the bleed as a device. There are ways of even doing that. This color will transition pretty well from an orange into a blue. I think what I'll do, and I haven't thought about this at all yet, but as I look at it, I think what I'm going to have is I'm going to have this dark moonlight influence carry down through the first heads. And as we come down here, I'll pick up some more natural lighting filling up in here so that I can do these two heads in more natural flesh tones. And I'll give you an example of an eccentric uh, flesh tone and then a common flesh tone down here. So you get sort of a little bit of both. Moonlight stuff works real well with uh, violets, blacks, blues.
you'll notice I went kind of a lavender and then it's kind of a rose matter or what is they call this called something that it's called mahogany red of course. Mahogany red is the color you seen the two heads there. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we go from this Copenhagen blue, which is kind of a sea blue, to this uh, um, what do they call it? Uh, bright violet, which would bleed if you sprayed it, and then into the uh, mahogany red, and now into uh, light umber in here. It'll bleed if you spray it with spray mixtures? The bright violet would. Mm. These umbers and earth tones won't bleed. Yeah. You can get a lot of mileage with um, some yellow ochre, which we've got for your foreheads. It seems to work quite nicely. And then in through the, uh, the area around the cheeks, the ears, and the eyes, you'll want to put some uh, a little bit of rouge there, even on men. And then down toward the bottom of the head, it's going to gray just a little bit for you. So, a little bit blue. And then over that, let's neutralize that blue with some dark brown. Prismacolor dark brown, burn umber, and sepia at a glance kind of all look the same. But these heads are influenced by the uh, moonlight, so this is about as strong of a red as we're going to get, going back to that mahogany red, which does have some red content. I don't know if you can see it too well, but let's see what it looks like there. Try not to put colors next to each other that if they were to blend together would create gray, unless there's a place where I specifically wanted that. So if I want orange juxtaposed with blue, if I smear them together, they're going to go gray. They're complements. But if I put violet between the orange and the blue, they'll transition because the violet relates to both. Now I just have to figure out what exactly I want for color content at the bottom of this composition. And I'll go to this, uh, what they call bronze. Probably a hideous color scheme by the time we're done, but it won't matter because you'll see the technique in several different ways, some more naturalistic than others. Let's leave it at that and start smearing.
working to your cool. And just like Norman Lindsay's pencil uh, pen drawings, I don't really feel that I have to be airbrushed smooth. I can get it that way if I want. So in places I may, in other places I might not. Now, once I got some black on it, I want to be real careful with it. So I'll flip over to the other side of the Kleenex. But you didn't, you didn't change the surface on the Kleenex as you were working. No. Right. Do you intend to pick out with this, or do you? Yes, I intend to pick out. And to draw back in, too. It will be both subtractive and additive. Look at that horribly ugly blue. <laughs> it's just where I want it. Forget, you can still work on the back of it too. Things sound uh, disquietingly peaceful in the other room. I shudder to think <laughs> of what masterpieces Gregory and Robbery are churning out. You're not taking into account that those two characters are blind. Are you? Which two? These two? Yeah, Buffy and. Yeah, they got dark here as far as I'm concerned. Okay. You could like tilt a little bit so we don't get the back of your head. Maybe you can bring this camera this way a little and shoot it this way. <coughs> Maybe that makes it worse. You want to load the camera? I mean, no. Maybe you should just get back. Pick up a little ogre, maybe. On these colored fonts, Mark, do they color scan them, or do they, would they strip the type just directly over the top of these for presentation? Which color comps? The, the color comp. That, that like, like I'm doing here? Yeah. Or would they do what? How, how would their presentation. They'd either color Xerox them and present them as is, or they would scan them into the computer and adjust them or leave them as is. And type on them that way. It's remarkable how little we'll have to do to make this head work. Anyone who was here during Alan Hunter's demonstration of the Johnny Depp movie, what was the name of that movie? I think of time. 